but it's great to have something with all that antioxidant and tonifying and tonifying mm -hmm. means that it's going to support whichever organ. So in this case, it's the liver and kidneys. And when we tonify, we're supporting them to function as they should. So we support the natural function of the organ itself. And that's why the word tonifying is there because it tones and supports the organ. So when we're tonifying our organs, we're also then getting knock-on effects. You know, it's got an antioxidant activity and immunomodulatory as well, which is what's going to be needed for people with cancer. We don't want to give them huge immune boosters. We don't want to give them, but we can help modulate. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business, and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. And I'm very lucky to have Christine Thomas with us again from the Herbal Extract Company here in, well, in Australia, over in Sydney, because I'm in Adelaide. But um, today we're going to talk about a herb called Glossy Privet. And I've personally never used Glossy Privet and I was looking through all its indications and I can understand why, because there's a lot of research or it's used in TCM, I should say, for a lot of cancers and that's not something that I treat. So it's understandable. I was like, oh no, why haven't I got this herb? I like to have as many as I possibly can. And I was having a look through thinking, why haven't I got it? And realized that it isn't really my niche area. So Christine, tell us about this herb. Well, also it's relatively new for us too, so it's probably not something you would have learned about. Right. Studies maybe. It's, um, but uh, it's, interestingly, is a noxious weed in Australia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Chinese herb, but, yeah, there's, it actually, and as we've spoken about before, these weeds are often the things that we need the most when they're surrounding us. Yep. And yeah, in Australia, it's a weed of potential national significance. Well, it's good we're using it. Invasive species. Right. So also in certain, a few other countries like um, New Zealand, Argentina, Spain, Italy, it's, it's a noxious weed. So privet, right. there's privets, you right. hear about the privet trees. Yeah. So it's an evergreen tree or shrub and it has these beautiful shiny leaves which give it its botanical name legustrum uh, lucidum lucidum means bright or shiny in them um, so it's got these glossy leaves which give it its name wow. but we actually eat the fruit oh okay so, uh, raw material you can see these little tiny oh, yeah. tiny fruits um, yep yep hard uh, little yeah so that's what you what we use to extract you can see a whole herb there yep and while I'm at it, I'll do my little uh, demonstration of the colour. Yeah, let's see. Very and dark brown and dense. Yeah, antioxidants. But another thing is from the olive family. Right. So it has sort of a similar constituents. Mm -hmm. and, and as we know, it's used, uh, if it's an immune herb, mm. like you said, used in cancer traditionally. So, um, yeah, there's some similarities there with the family. Because olive yeah. leaf, you know, is used for that as well. It does. It's a very dark, dark color. It's quite dense, isn't it? That one. So, and when you know, it's a, a noxious weed. Very pleasant though. Oh, good. I mean, we tried earlier when we spoke um, in another podcast, uh, when I was trying globe artichoke, which is yeah. very bitter. Yeah. It's actually quite um, pleasant and sweet. Yeah. Which I mean, considering the indications for all of these cancers and all of these chronic diseases, you actually would quite like something that tastes a little bit better than globe yeah. artichoke, chances are. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's got a lot of tonic effects um, you've written about in your short piece here because it works. So what is this, preclinical studies on the antioxidant activity? So when it's in osteoporosis, as oh, well yeah. as all of the cancer studies and how it's used. So it's not really my jam, I've got to say. I don't work in the area of cancer. But 
I mean, these are all preclinical studies. So um, please, if you have cancer, don't go rushing out and buy glossy yeah. privet. Please see somebody who knows what they're talking about. And <laughs> But it's great to have something with all that antioxidant and tonifying. And tonifying mm -hmm. means that it's going to support whichever organ. So in this case, it's the liver and kidneys. And when we tonify, we're supporting them to function as they should. So we support the natural function of the organ itself. And that's why the word tonifying is there because it tones and supports the organ. So when we're tonifying our organs, we're also then getting knock-on effects. You know, it's got an antioxidant activity and immunomodulatory as well, which is what's going to be needed for people with cancer. We don't want to give them huge immune boosters. We don't want to give them but we can help modulate some of that. And this is what this does as well. So um, there's a lot of preclinical things there. Yeah, well, I mean, it has been used for, you know, more than a thousand years in traditional Chinese medicine. So there is that empirical research yeah. and traditional use. Yep. So, but in the Chinese, usually it's used in formulas. Yep. So that's why it's very hard to find human research because it's not really used on its own. Yep. So it's like Chinese medicine, they use a lot of different formulas. So it's, it's yeah. hard to remember where it's been separated from the formula. But they have used it because it's, it, well, it's used to tonify the kidneys and strengthen the bone in Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine. And so because of that, they've used it in the treatment of osteoporosis because so it's in a lot of formulas for osteoporosis. Um, and it has, as you said, in preclinical trials, yeah. um, been shown to increase bone mineral density and also display these antioxidant activities. So when you look at osteoporosis, oxidative stress and estrogen deficiency are the two major factors contributing to that. So that's why perhaps when we see this antioxidant action coming through, that being used in osteoporosis. Yeah. Um, but they also suggest because of this antioxidant activity that is going to help in the prevention of other diseases caused by free radicals such as cancer. Right, yeah. And it has been used traditionally in traditional Chinese medicine for the treatment of cancers and specifically liver. Right. And it has been shown in traditional Chinese medicine to be effective in improving the chemotherapy-induced bone marrow suppression. Right. So, and the hair loss, so the alopecia. Yep. And immunosuppression. Right. Um, and it's also being used in TCN to enhance the therapeutic effects of chemotherapy. So all of these that we're discussing, this is all complementary and enhancement to the allopathic medicine that is yeah. going on. These are not used. I mean, traditionally they would have been, there wasn't any chemotherapy a thousand years ago. So traditionally it would yeah. have been used independently, but the recent preclinical trials and all the recent studies are on complementing what is going, you know, someone taking the allopathic medicine and then they take the complementary medicine, they combine the two. And there's a lot of evidence for improved outcomes when they're combined rather than um, just doing complementary or just doing allopathic. And, but I mean, it's different across all of them. There's different research in different areas for different cancers. So we can't just say cancer is a big word, you know, cause there are just so many different ones mm -hmm. and some just respond so quickly and, you know, it's massive. Yeah. And um, the preclinical studies on glossy privet. So again, as we've spoken about before, you can't extrapolate that to human use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it has been shown in a test tube or an animal, unfortunately. Yep. Yep. Animal testing, but for people looking to make a drug, yep. um, they do animal testing. And, and it's been shown in these tests to be anti-proliferative agent mm -hmm. for a number of different cancers, lung, pancreatic, breast, prostate, um, colorectal, and hepatocellular carcinoma. So that does support the traditional use. But again, it hasn't been shown to do that in humans yet. Yeah. But it's a, it's a sign that it could. Yeah. So, and again, um, it, in TCM, it has been shown to have a positive impact on the immune system mm. and to fight infection. And some in vitro studies have shown these properties, but it's still yet to be proven in humans. Yeah. But one study, Chinese research, has found that it suppressed uh, hepatitis C virus repetition. Wow. So that might support its antiviral. Yeah. Effect. And if they found it in, in one study, chances are they will keep doing more studies because that is something, you know, the hepatitis, all of the letters, not just the hepatitis C, but all of the letters, the A, the B, the C, and so yeah. on of hepatitis, you know, then there's work to be done in all of those areas. So chances are there will be more studies coming out on glossy privet and hepatitis C, mm -hmm. I would think. I don't think they'll leave it at one study. 
So um, um, that's the thing. And, and because it's from the olive family, it has that layer open in it, which olive leaves have. Yeah. There's been a lot of studies done on that. Yeah. Um, but again, we're showing antiviral activity. Again, you can't extrapolate that to even the whole herb because it's going to have a different action when it's um, with all the constituents in the herb to just when you isolate that one constituent. Yeah. But again, it might show that perhaps that's what, where its antiviral action is coming from. Mm, yeah. It's a very interesting herb, not one that I am going to purchase because that's not my niche area. But I mean, it was sold out for a while there and it's back again now. So which is, there is a lot of use for this herb. And I think it's something that um, if you're seeing clients with osteoporosis or you're working in the you know cancer support area it's worth having a really good investigation and seeing if this is something that should go on your shelves so yeah I, I think also um I mean it is a great immune function mm. herb. so I think just in general yeah it is an immune enhancing herb even just and also if you're talking virus um common cold Yes. Um, yeah, they're all viruses, aren't they? So, you know, it's yeah, worth having things on the shelf for the viruses. Yeah. yeah. So I, think it's, I think it doesn't need to be sort of pigeonholed as a cancer osteoporosis. It, it has, a, and a lot of these Chinese have, have this sort of broad. Yeah. Passion. And I'm no, I'm, I haven't studied Chinese medicine, so I don't know about this yin liver yeah. kidney action, but I, I put that in my reports just because some people do understand yeah. things. And yep. in, so, you know, sometimes it's interesting to understand it from that, the energetic side of things. But, um, you know, traditionally also it's been used for weak vision. So, you know, just old, I think old age, just yep. in general, like so this osteoporosis, premature graying of hair yep. is one of the yep. traditional uses. But this um, macular degeneration, this weak vision, I think the antioxidants yeah. often why that that's used any debility so it actually has a lot of uses so, so it might well be yeah, worth think, really thinking about this for the for sort of in chinese medicine for yeah. cancer support and yeah. osteoporosis but it, it's a broader in, in, in the sense of the immune fraction and, yeah um, because when we think about that osteoporosis factor that is your menopausal woman onward really yeah so in actual fact yeah, you know menopause. That is, yeah. um, you know, a massive component of the population going, we'll, well, we'll all go through menopause. So um, it is actually probably something I should really think about because I see a lot of menopausal women. Yeah, exactly. So maybe yeah. I'll... As well as osteoporosis, but also, also um, arthritis. And, yeah, look um, at it in a new light. And the um, improvement that it has. Yeah. yeah all that oxidative stress and everything else. So mm -hmm. as well, we're thinking about and really considering it as part of that, you know, later life herbal medicine list that we have, as well as all of the cancer or pre-cancer studies that the Chinese have used it for. And if it's a weed, then it probably has some really yeah, good benefits because it can grow anywhere. Weed, so, it's right. so it's always yeah. And I think it's quite a woman's type herb. Not, I mean, it's mm. not both, but the Chinese name, uh, new Zenzi, which I'm not sure if I say correctly, but the new means female. Oh, okay. It means chaste and Zen means fruit. Right. Translation. And it's based on the idea that evergreen trees are symbols of female chastity. Oh. Um, so it's, just, you know, an inter interesting that it has this menopausal yeah. um, association and, um, yeah, but also maintaining energy. It's kind of a, an energy. Yeah. You know, that's you know, used in constipation and where you sort of need a bit of stimulation in a sense. Yeah. yeah. An interesting herb. The, and the, yeah, it probably is menopause. Say you're 50 year old onward. If you're treating anyone 50 year old onward, you probably need to really look at glossy privet and consider it as part of your herbal dispensary. So yeah, yeah it's a good one. And I love that we're using a weed. Yes. <laughs> We're making use of something that, you know, people are digging up and burning, but we're making use of it and giving it to clients. And of course, weeds are very strong yeah. um, because they grow in all the places that other things don't want to grow, that nobody's gotten around to pulling them out yet. And so they've got a real benefit. So lots of these weeds work particularly mm -hmm. well. And you have to look at dandelion and mm. ribwort. Yeah, absolutely. Those two are, yeah. you know, amazing weeds and they grow anywhere and everywhere mm -hmm. and they do incredible things. And it's just like, you know, really consider gross, glossy privet as part of your dispensary. So, now, have I missed anything? Have we not talked, have we covered everything with the good old glossy? 
think that covers, yeah, the yeah. basics of it, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming back on and chatting to us about Glossy Privet. And I look forward to chatting to you um, again very soon about another amazing herb from the Herbal Extract Company. Thank you, Christine. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.